Hey guys, Henning and Morton from Flip Normals. In this video, we are going to be looking at how you can grade your texture maps in Photoshop before you actually start projecting them onto your model in something like Mari or Painter. Grading your maps is really like the first thing you should be doing and it's going to make your life so much easier as a texture artist. But just before we get started, make sure to subscribe and hit the little notification bell so you can notify it every time we put out more videos like this. Yep. So we are going to be looking at some textures before we really get it started with grading. And we, let's just talk about them quickly because I see this a lot of texture artists. They, they go and they just find some random images and they just start projecting this onto their models and all hell breaks loose. So let's look at some of these and why these are good and why these are bad. So something like this would be really solid for texturing in general because it's fairly flat perspective. There's not a lot of crazy lighting baked into this. It's, it's fairly overcast and um, it's just it's just a really nice picture with a bunch of different patterns you can use for for your texturing. If I were to texture the texture this map, I would probably separate out different patches. Like I would probably have the back patch here, the front one, the middle one, and just use these these different ones. I wouldn't have any shadow areas like this included in textures at all because shadows should really come from the lighting and the shape of the model. Something like this would also be really good because it's relatively flat lighting. Same with this. Yeah, that's very nice. This, on the other hand, would be pretty bad, at least in a lot of areas, because now there is so much baked in lighting, very harsh shadows. And even in the areas which which aren't like like here, which looks pretty flat, there's still there's still gonna be some pretty harsh shadows, which is which has a lot of directionality to it. But you might be able to get something from like this area here. Something like this is really bad, particularly the, the <laughs> butt of this rhino, because there is so much lighting baked into it, and you really want to sculpt this up. Shadows, there's spec in there, yeah. like it's really, yeah, you can't really use that. This as well, the another rhino butt pic picture, you really can't use this for, for much things. This as well, obviously, this is like, has an actual <laughs> cast shadow, so terrible stuff. So we're going to be looking at one picture now in, uh, in Photoshop which looks like this. This is completely ungraded, and this is also from textures.com. Now this here is a pretty decent start because there's not a whole lot of shadows in it. And um, there's a lot of stuff here we can use for it. This is just like a 1K image or whatever it is. It's, it's pretty small. So let's look at why we need to grade this before we actually do it. If we go into Painter now, and now we have our man and uh, we have a Rhino texture form. And let's just start to project this on top of it. Already now, you can see that there is a problem. The bottom part is incredibly dark and the top part is incredibly bright. So if we were to now start use this as a map and you know start to paint across like this, you would now see that we would you would you would be having dark and bright parts right next to each other. And this is almost impossible to blend. The way you would fix this afterwards would be you would go in and you would kind of work on top of it like this, or you would use some adjustment layers to like brighten mm. some one part up and and it's gonna be just be a huge mess. Yeah, but now you're just gonna be wasting time fighting against the texture. Exactly. Um, so. When you're texturing, you really wanna be as lazy as possible. <laughs> yes. And uh, having, having lighting baked in like this, it's gonna be really, really hard. So let's look at how we can actually fix this in Photoshop. Photoshop is a really good tool for texture painting. Some people use Nuke as well, and that might be good if you're doing like 200, 200 images, but Photoshop is really solid when it comes to just generally grading the pictures. Um, you can see there are some problem areas here specifically, like we have some streaks going across here. Uh, these are gonna cause issues, like these little guys here, because now we're gonna be seeing this pattern over and over again. We have some up here as well, where you see a very distinct pattern. And also down here, it becomes quite blurry as well. And here, there's just... No rhino. There's no rhino. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a problem. And we just we just want to spend some time making sure this is, this is as good as possible. Before I'm texturing any kind of project, I'll spend like a day or so. Just a full day, just finding, t finding pictures and just grading them up. And you might think like, oh, it's a lot of time where I'm not actually texturing. But the amount of time that you'll save in the end by actually doing a good amount of prep work is going to be well well worth it yeah you you every single moment you spend on this you're getting back tenfold later on so the first thing we want to do we want to brighten this area here up so we can very easily do that with uh brightness contrast and then we just brighten everything up and then we can mask out the other part so if we um use a gradient tool and we can invert this and now we can just drag it up so now you can see the bottom part now becomes brighter so something like this. It's still, you know, it's a bit too bright and maybe the contrast is a bit too high. So we can do something about that. 
Yeah, so it becomes just becomes a bit a bit more even already. So already now we are we're in a far better spot than we we were before. Then we can also see we have some of the areas over here and here we're just going to be cloning these out. But before we do that, we are going to be using the most magical tool in Photoshop, <laughs> which not a single person knows exists. And yeah, except for like. Two people. Yeah, except for two people, and now more people. <laughs> so we're gonna be hitting the most insane hotkey ever, which is Control, Shift, Alt, and E. What this hotkey is doing is it's taking a copy of everything which is which is visible and putting it in a new on into a new layer. So this now means if we disable the bottom ones, everything has now been merged into a new one. Mm -hmm. Very very useful. Then we are going to go going over to Image Adjustment, and here is the magic bullet: Shadow and Highlights. If we use it, we can now see that we have a bunch of settings here for, well, two. <laughs> we are going to be seeing a bunch more. We can really, like, make sure that everything here just goes way more even. It's insane how much stuff this tool here can squeeze out. Compare this <laughs> to that. Like, I do this for every single map I have. Even if you think it's a flat map, it's, yeah. it's properly polarized and whatever, I still go in and I still extract more stuff with this tool here. And once you do this, like, you might think that, oh, okay, the corrected image actually starts to... You, you get a lot of gray spots in there and oh, I can't use this for anything. But the thing is now what you're looking at is the pure or a pure diffuse yeah. or albedo. So, you know, you have a bunch of settings here, which I, I normally don't really tweak these, but there is, you can definitely go in and, you know, get more control with, with some of these. You can just see, like, uh, you can just see what we're getting with this. So, uh, we just... It's quite we, a big difference. There's quite a big difference. We're just getting so much more stuff here. You might want to set the color to zero as well, because it might, it might just change it a little bit. Okay, so, enable and disable. <laughs> so already, we have a far better image. Then we can start to uh, fix these areas here. This is where you could do the straight up like content where fill. And it's always worth just trying out that. So let's just select this area. I'm a big fan of it's content so aware good. tool. And this is shift F5, select, select area and then there's content aware. And there we go. <laughs> now it's filled in with rhino skin, like magic. Yeah, and then you know you can always go in maybe content aware fill on the border or maybe you clone it out just to make yeah. it blend better. But content aware fill is, is really is like a magic bullet. When it, it really comes is. To this. We can also use um, the spot healing brush as well with content aware fill. We can try this on some of these lines here. Now this is this is where I think they have some kind of AI or whatever it is into it. So this may not work properly. If you're if you're doing this with a clone brush, it's going to work 100. percent but yeah, in this case, this is this is honestly my favorite way of using content aware fill uh, because it's uh, it's very interactive for me, yeah. and I can just really quickly just paint out and and get like very instant feedback. So usually a spot healing brush with content aware fill is my preferred method. It, it's so good. Like, but, like sometimes it doesn't work. You know, you have to you have to use it a little. You have to you have to know how the tool works basically. Yeah. Yeah, and especially when you're up around the corners like this, sometimes this may not work. Yeah, just because it yeah. doesn't have anything to predict from. So that's where something like the uh, clone stamp tool would be probably a little bit better. Exactly. I prefer to use the clone clone stamp tool for this. So here we have the clone stamp as well. A nice little tip for clone is that you can do make a new layer and you can set this the sample to all layers. So now we can just hit the alt key and we can just paint on this. And now we only have a one layer with this, which means we aren't disrupting anything at yeah, all. Yeah, so the way that that works is like, it'll sample everything below it and the current layer. Um, obviously, uh, right now that what's below it takes up, you know, it's 100% opaque, yeah. so it can't go through that layer, but let's say it was 50% opaque um, or transparent, then it would actually go through that layer as well and pick um, the brightness contrast um, corrected image down it's there. It's really good. I prefer to do this with a soft brush. Uh, I used to use a harder brush for this, but I just found that I just got too many artifacts. Mm. I know some texture artists recommend using hard brush and some grunge brushes might work really well, but I prefer to just stick with a real soft brush with this. Uh, so I just want to get some of this sharpness back into it because uh, I really prefer if I have the same level of sharpness throughout. Yeah. When painting out like this as well, this is something I do when I'm texture painting is I'm trying to work with the pattern. I'm not just doing this as a random one. I'm trying to like, work up the pattern and kind of like working into each other like kind of like an interlocking lock just so it just works a little bit better another little tip you you can always also do is like if you're using content aware fill and, and the clone stamp tool like this at the end of it you can always crop your picture a little bit so let's say maybe sometimes it's hard to get the borders or the edges of the image quite right you can always crop it a tiny bit 
um, just to get rid of any artifacts that might be on the outskirts of the image there. Yeah, that's not a bad idea at all. We also have some little dots here as well. I prefer to remove stuff which is too specific because you are going to be fighting with this yeah. throughout the entire map. And it's also pretty insane how much just a little cloning can do. Like it, it just it just removes it. Like it's to the point that you really can't see what I just what I just removed. Yeah. So the cool thing about having a map like this is there is a lot of different qualities of texture. We have this part which is quite sharp and uh, and quite distinct. Then we have these which are have these stripes to them, and then we have some more generic textures here. So we're not going to be using this as a tile. We are going to be projecting this map onto our model, mm. which just means we have a lot of range in one map. What you often find when you're texturing is that you end up you grading like four to different pictures, and then you end up using four of them. <laughs> yeah. It's always tops. like that. Yeah, tops. So you could, of course, keep on working with this, but, but honestly, this map here would work quite well for our needs. So let's just compare it to before. You know, everything is just... It's just so much nicer. Yeah, we could we could even out this a little bit more up here, just to make it a little bit better. But you know, whatever you want to do. Yeah, and the cool thing is you can slap this on with a tile ball, use it like a triplaner. Yeah, and then you have your first base for the tile, and then you can always go in with some more manual uh, projection, hand painting on top to break up the tiles. That's a really good idea. Let's try that in Painter. All for right, fun. <laughs> <laughs> going off script. <laughs> so let's go here and and save this out. Cool, so now we have our new map directly in Painter. So let's try this out and see how this works compared to the last one. You can see that, you know, obviously it's a lot softer. It's a lot more even than the last one we had. We're not gonna be getting this kind of patterning. So let's just do this on straight on top of, um, of the last layer we had. We can just start to paint, paint this out. So now you, when we're just painting on top of this, when you, you see we're not getting any of one of these nasty artifacts like we had before. You know, we're still seeing the stripes here. Maybe mm. you want to remove those, but you know, that can also be a feature as well. Yeah, it's just a lot easier to blend this now. Yeah, so. this, is, this, is, this means that we can now focus on getting nice patterns across instead of spending all our time just trying to, to blend this, uh, to blend it or fixing mistakes. So you know, basically wherever we are painting now, this is just this just makes your life so much easier. But let's try with the triplanar like we promised. Ooh, very yeah. exciting. Well, I you know sometimes I just say stuff uh, <laughs> that felt natural, but uh, <laughs> it is actually a good working f workflow for texture. <laughs> yeah, it really is. So let's set this here to triplanar, and then we can scale it down. And then you see, then you do see some of the tiling, but yeah. the cool thing is like, if you want to go in, you want to make this a little more optimal, you can always go in and, and do some projection painting on top of where you had seams or a difference in details, that kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, we could definitely, we could definitely paint out some of the seams. Now the really cool thing about using triplanars like this is like Morgan was saying, we get coverage over, over the entire yeah, instantly. model. You know. And you know, if we we want to use for this for production as well, we would probably go in and we'd um, uh, we'd make it into a proper tileable map, which this really isn't. But just you can just see how insanely quickly we get some nice results with this. Let's actually try this with the other one and see if this what this looks like then. Yeah, here you can see. Yeah, that's that's pretty poopy. <laughs> that's pretty poopy. <laughs> so the only difference between these two maps is that one has been graded and one hasn't been graded. And that's actually crazy. You know, nothing else happened. Yeah. There. It's just the grade. So now you, you, just by doing this, you have sped up your texturing by like 4,000% at least. <laughs> yeah, I would say that's a conservative estimate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so honestly, uh, texture or grading or textures is quite simple once you know how. You mm -hmm. use the shadow highlight features in Photoshop a lot. Before you do that, you'll, you'll be selecting the maps you want to use. I would say that's the most important part because otherwise you're going to be fighting with a bad map throughout the entire project. Spend some time finding for reference pictures that are probably overcast, yeah. doesn't have a lot of harsh shadows or any shadows in there if possible. And then, you know, start grading those. Another tip as well is, so let's say you have several pictures like this. Let's say you have several, uh, uh, several uh, rhino pictures from uh, the same rhino but at different angles. I would grade them so that they have the same color range and same value range mm. so that if one is more saturated than the other I would make them the same saturation range because then you can very easily blend them in. So I would take them into um, into Photoshop and make sure they have the same brightness and the same color essentially. Yeah. So it's going to make your life so much easier. So yeah, there you have it. Very nice and simple tips on how to grade your textures in Photoshop for texturing. 
So make sure to like, comment and subscribe and hit that little notification bell to get notified every time we put on a new video. And if you have any tips on how to grade the textures, let us know. We'd love to hear your thoughts mm, on this as well. Definitely.